Hello everyone, it's Friday again, so it's time for another video. My name is Marjolein, but you can also call me Maddie. And today I'm going to change uh, a bit about the video. Instead of talking about another subject who doesn't have that much in common with the piece, I'm going to talk about the piece itself and the choices I make and why I picked certain colors. So in this case, I wanted to draw my character Veronica and she is a very interesting character to do. She has a lot of sass, to put it that way. And I started out in my bullet journal because I have way too many pages left in my bullet journal. So it's perfect for some quick sketching and some research. So I started with scribbling little Veronica's sitting in different poses with or without a glass of champagne. And I grabbed myself some reference uh, of Google to see uh, what women are like when they sit like that and to get inspiration. So this is actually the second sketch I started on the big paper because the first one didn't work out that well. So first I am sketching with my Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils and I start to work with a light one first and when I have the shapes and some features down, I like to decide to darken it up a bit with a darker pencil. So here I am using light blue because I knew the ink I was gonna use had some blue tint in it. So I decided, well, blue and blue, that will work together. So I was first planning on let her letting her sit on the page solo then I was maybe some background elements will work uh, like curtains or a ballroom kind of vibe however I decided against that so I wrapped with my eraser all the background away in the original you can still see the lines um, but it doesn't bother t me too much uh, this piece ultimately wasn't I'm not the most proud of it, but it was really enjoyable and that's what counts as well. So here I am darkening the lines, the good lines, with my darker blue pencil. And in this phase you can be very precise and you have to be. If not, things could get messy and it could confuse yourself. <laughs> Because all of the lines, yay. And since this is still the pencil face, you have a bit of leeway with the eraser. Colored pencil isn't very erasable and same goes for the Faber-Castell polychromos. I know there are pencils who can be erased. Color erase, I think. Haven't got them yet, but I want to try them out myself. So after darkening the most important lines, it was time to start with the tedious and scary phase of inking. Well, it isn't that scary, but it can be tedious if you go all the way into the details. Uh, I kept this drawing rather simple, because sometimes you just need a simpler drawing to let your mind wander. And this piece was exactly the perfect fit for that. And I started in the upper left corner with the hair because you don't want to smudge all the ink over the page. You, you really don't want that. I, I've done different in the past. And I started with another just random at a certain place on the, on the drawing, but um, you have to be really careful, you have to take really weird poses with your <laughs> wrists and that's not very convenient. Um, for the inking of this piece I used Diamine Iridescent and I don't know the exact color, it was blue with red I think. 
Uh, they they have really funny names. You have um, oh, Philip. Philip is one name, <laughs> and Robert, and I forgot the ladies' names. But they are not just blue and red. No, they have a different name. So that's really interesting. I still can't remember which is which. Uh, the beautiful effect of this ink is if you use the right paper, if you let the ink flow enough, um, because you need a smooth, a lot of ink to show, to let the effect show. And if you let it dry and move it around in, in light, in sunlight, you can see the colors change. This piece, I think I used the blue red combo so if it dries and you move it a bit around you can see the ink change from blue to red and it has a bit of shimmer to it it's wonderful i recently discovered those on the internet and i was like yeah i need these i also bought another one which has the same effect but it also has glitters however if you use it with a dip pen, uh, the glitters tend to go back to the bottom because they are heavier than the ink and you don't have sparkles anymore. So that's kind of sad. So you, a fountain pen will be more efficient with that, I guess. So you see me working on this piece. First I did the outline and now I'm working on the cross hatching and I know it wasn't my perfect straight line day because the lines are a bit wonky and the distances between them aren't as equal as I would like them to be. But hey, it was still an enjoyable project to work on. And sometimes you come up with decisions during the drawing and then you regret those decisions. And I had. I didn't regret the cross hatching, but at a certain point I started to work on the hair. And you will see it in a bit. And I did a lot of work in the hair, like really being precise and, and adding texture. And then I was like, no, this this is too, this doesn't fit. The hair wasn't good enough anymore. So I decided, well, I added some color already. So let's make it pure ink. So you have more of the beautiful shimmer of the ink. And <laughs> another thing with this ink, you have to be careful with moisture if you have your hands are moist or if you have something that's just a little bit damp you can already ruin the ink by smudging it i i have i have experienced it sadly i was working on another piece it was a centangle piece and my hands were just, I didn't even feel them to be moist. It was, they were, in my opinion, dry. But then I grabbed the piece and I smeared a bit over one of the lines. And I wouldn't believe it, but there was a smudge on my drawing. And I was like, what is going on? I don't understand it. And then I saw maybe there was a bit of moisture so this ink you you can work with aquarel paint after <laughs> after you inked it you have to ink it after the paint and also I did some small corrections with um, gouache paint because well it's great it has great coverage but it is moist. So the ink, within a second, it thought, well, let's mix in with the paint. So I couldn't get back those 
extremely white highlights and I think it's not necessary but yike that was interesting and intense so here you see me doing the final touches grabbing my colorful palette just to add a bit more definition to the hair and a bit more details closing it yay <laughs> and a final thing the signing so here we are here's the finished piece i hope you enjoyed it and maybe let me hear if you like this more or prefer me rambling about another subject thank you for watching and bye